Hey there, Larissa from Beekeeping Made Simple, and we're going to talk about different beetle traps you can use to keep your small hive beetle population low. So I have the Swiffer sheets, I have the Brawny Dynamax sheets, and I have the screen bottom. I'm also going to talk about some traps I've used in the past that I didn't love, which is the Beetle Blaster and the Beetle Barns. Now, um, the number one way that I found to keep a small high beetle population low is to have low mite levels. However you want to do that, treating, no treating, whatever, hives that are strong and healthy and do not have viruses and are weak do a really good job of corralling the mites into crevices in the hive and keeping them there and preventing them from laying their eggs. So that is the number one way to keep small high beetle populations low. However, your beehive population is going to get low and you still have a lot of honey on the hive so you want to trap some of those beetles to keep the population from getting uh, too out of control. And um, my go-to that I think works really well is the screen bottom. Now these are, um, I bought this one from Daydant. It was I believe $30. You paint it, it comes just a uh, wood and then it has a screen bottom as well as the oil paint inside. What I don't like about this one that I got from Daydant is that it's actually kind of a pain to pull the tray out. You have to have one of the hive tools with the hook to kind of get it in there, pull it out. If you're looking to buy one, if it's possible to see how to get the tray out, I would look for one that's a little bit easier. I'm not a huge fan of this one from Daydant. But either way, so you have this tray down below and the tray has another screen on top of it. So you fill this tray up with oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, you know, the, the cheapest oil, I buy them in jugs. It's $7 for two of these here at the Costco in Hawaii. Some people use diatomaceous earth, which is another option and will kill the beetles. I found that um, when working the hives, if honey's dripping down, and gets into the diatomaceous earth and pollen, if water gets down in there because um, you're in a rainy area, that can cause the diatomaceous earth to not be very effective. So I prefer to use the vegetable oil. Also, you wanna be careful when changing the diatomaceous earth, the, the particles, the dust, um, is something that you don't wanna breathe in. And it, I keep my beehives at some other people's properties because we have a lot of them and it's a little bit messier to, to clean up. So I, it's, it's a lot easier to dispose of the oil in my opinion. But this works really well. I'm going to show you now how to use one of these things and one of them on my hive and how many beetles I have inside. And this is how your oil pan works. You are just going to fill this pan up with oil. Now you actually don't need to fill it up all of the way or even half of the way full. You really just want there to be a coating in here. So you can just fill it up a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch deep. Make sure the entire thing's coated and having your hives level helps with this. Then you put your screen on top now, when putting this on a beehive, you want the part that opens up to be facing the back of the beehive. You don't want to have to be changing this in front of your entrance, blocking your entrance, bees falling inside it. So you just take your hive tool. So it, if you use this kind of bottom, I try to not push it in all the way so I can easily pull it out. And then Use two hands to pull this out, especially if there might be some rainwater in here, making it overfill a little bit. And there's always gonna be some pollen down below. You'll see that this thing is small, full of small hive beetle. Actually, it looks like a wax moth larva in there too. So you see that there are tons of small hive beetles in that oil pan. It's really easy to clean out. I I worked for a place where they actually gave me a sieve and a five gallon bucket and made me filter the oil and reuse it again. For my hives, I don't do that. That oil is pretty gross and I, I just dispose of it. I, I take it like 20 feet away from the beehives and throw it in the bushes. The downside to it is you have to keep on top of it. I mean, not even weekly, maybe every three to four weeks, 
and just pull it out, empty it, and put new oil in. And that's because it can actually start to smell pretty bad. If you live in a place that's pretty humid, it might sm start to smell bad even faster. And I believe one hive actually absconded this one farm I worked for when kind of everybody forgot about the oil pans we were trying out on a few beehives. And by the time we changed them, they stunk really bad and the bees had taken off. I've also found that um, some of the bees actually will move up in the beehive because they're getting away from the stinky oil pan below. So just make sure that you empty it out. And they work really well. They last a while. They don't, they're nothing that as a beekeeper you have to do when you're opening the hive, which all of the other traps for the most part the beekeeper has to move aside um, and bees can get stuck in it. Now one other thing to mention about these things, you can make them your own or yourself. And I worked for a farm where they made their own oil pans. The thing is, is that when the guy was working on making them, the trickiest part is the fact that you have to fit this oil pan inside it. And so he was making his own oil pan and if the oil pan um, has any kind of like just a teeniest little gap that a bee can squish her way into to get in there, she will and you will find hundreds of dead bees in your oil pan. So that's why I just bought my own. I've built a lot of my own equipment, especially here in Hawaii. Shipping to here can sometimes double the price of equipment. But making your own screened bottom can be tricky because you cannot have any gaps in there or else the bees will get into the oil. And the reason why is because honey can drip into the oil, maybe when you're doing an inspection, pollen's getting in there, and so the bees are attracted to it and they try their hardest to get down in there. So some of the other methods to controlling small hive beetle is to put a sheet under the lid of your beehive. You can use, um, what I use are the Brawny Dynamax towels. Not, not just any kind of brawny towel, be in my hair. Not any kind of shop towel, specifically this Brawny Dynamax towel. And usually it's either all blue or white with like a little blue strip on it. Shop towels will not work. I've tried it. They actually turn it into confetti and pull it out of the hive and you'll find it in the grass outside of the front entrance. But what you do is, um, you can actually find, most beekeeping supply places will sell a towel just like this in smaller quantities in a little plastic package. Um, what you do is you can take the entire towel, um, especially if you have a large small high beetle population, take the entire towel, or you can take your scissors and you can cut a strip. Jeez, I find into my eyeball. I usually just keep a pair of scissors in with my beekeeping tools because, um, Good to just have a pair for a lot of random things. Cut a strip that's three, four inches wide, and we're going to put it inside the beehive. literally just going to take it, place it over the top of the top bars of the uppermost super, put the lid back on. I guess the veil wasn't really necessary. Now, um, I don't really find those sold in small quantities. I bought a box of them on Amazon. It was $60. It's five years later. I'm still using that box. I brought them to my bee meetings and sold them to people in like packs of 10 and stuff. And they're actually a really great towel. Uh, I think they're called Dynamax because they're mostly sold to restaurants. Um, it, they say that it works well for a streak free wiping or something. And actually they are a really great shop towel to have. Now, if you need something right now, you can use Swiffer sheets. And so then you can find these probably at Walmart or Target or something. And these are more expensive, but if you just need a small amount real fast, you can usually find them at your local store. The important thing is, is that you wanna make sure they're the dry sheets and that they're unscented. See, so this is actually what you don't want. <laughs> I, 
I, um, this is just what I have in my house. But it looks just like this, but it will say unscented in actually pretty small letters on the box. If it says nothing on it, like this one does, and it looks like it might be unscented, it actually smells, smells faintly like chemicals and fake flowers. So you want the unscented kind. It's a lot easier to find the unscented kind on the internet. In the store, it can be hard to see the little text on the front that actually says unscented. Now, the Swiffer sheets actually have uh, two different textures on them. So one side is the upside, which is the fuzzy side, the side that would be collecting all of the dirt and dust off the floor, which is the purpose of them. And the other side is the side that sticks to the Swiffer. So you want to put it on your hive just like we do with the Brawny Dynamax towels with the fuzzy side up. Now what, what happens is if these two, those Brawny Dynamax towels up, they kind of look like felt, they turn white, and when beetles walk on it, they get stuck in it. You will sometimes find a few bees stuck on them and, and dead bees but for the most part it's, it's usually just one or two maybe three it, most for the most part they're beetles that are stuck on them now the downside to these things is that not always do the bees chew them up and beetles fall on them get stuck on them sometimes they just propolize them and then they're just covered in propolis and they do nothing sometimes Actually, the reason why I started to not use them as much and prefer the screened bottom with the oil pan is because the bees do propolize them to the top bars. And when I pull the towel off, usually there's just a lot of beetles that were stuck under the towel. Like the bees chased them under the towel and then left them there and are just guarding the towel to keep them out. So every time I pull the towel out, all these beetles just come running out. So the best way to make sure that the beetles die is with the screened bottom. The brawny Dynamax towels and the Swiffer, Swiffer sheets don't always kill the beetles. They just give the bees an extra place to corral the beetles into. Okay, so I put the Swiffer sheet on Sunday and it is now Wednesday. See that the bees are chewing it up. I actually put a hole in it. And so now it's a lot more felt like and fuzzy looking. And there's just a few bees, beetles stuck in it so far. It does take a few days for the bees to start to chew it up so that it can become felt like. And if you have a lower population, like this hive is three boxes tall and very full. If you had a smaller hive, it's going to take a lot longer. So these Swiffer sheets aren't going to be an immediate um, way to bring down the beetle population. I would say the benefit to the Swiffer sheet is that it's already kind of fuzzy. So the beetles get stuck in it a little bit sooner. I just, I'm not a fan of using something that's supposed to be for cleaning your home. Even though this is unscented, um, I don't know, it freaks me out a little bit. However, if you get the unscented kind, the bees will chew it up and they will um, it work the same thing as the brawny towel. Another thing you can use is the beetle blaster. They look like this. There are little holes on the top, big enough for a beetle to fall through, but the beetle, the bee can't get in there. And you would just take your oil, you know, the cheapest kind of oil you can find, pour it in there. It doesn't have to be a ton. It doesn't have to be full of the way. Um, I try to put it in at least, fill it up at least halfway sometimes these things get really full and then the beetles it doesn't kill the beetles anymore they just climb right in and out so once it's full halfway then you put it in between two frames and your box now you want to put it in between frames that have a lot of bees on them you know um, want to put it in between frames that are empty and this works pretty well too this is a trap I've used before so there's a whole bunch of beetles, actually, down in here. I don't use these as much anymore because um, I just get tired of pulling them in and out. When you take this out of the hive, 
it's it's full of oil so you need to make sure you stand it up very gently on its side so that the oil doesn't spill out while you're checking the hive and if you fill this up too high then it is going to spill out and also sometimes I forget if this is in the uppermost super which it's supposed to be in that super is empty so I don't even pull frames out I put that super on the ground forget this thing is in and now all of a sudden it's spilling out onto the tops of the frames I've definitely done that and I don't know maybe you are not a distracted beekeeper sometimes but sometimes I just make stupid mistakes like that and um, so I, I don't use these traps as much they say that you can reuse them but there's no way to open this up and it's really made out of pretty thin plastic so they, they fall apart kind of fast however these are super cheap I think they're like a dollar even less maybe so you would just put this in between frames um, now a lot of the times we even mention this in the directions when you, you get these is that bees will actually chase the beetles under the beetle blaster instead of um, them falling through the holes and dying in the oil inside and that is a way to trap the beetles it's just before you take it off you want to take your hive tool and slide it over the top of the beetle blaster and just squish any beetles that might be under it before you pick it up otherwise the beetles are just going to start scurrying around the hive all over again they also do say that you can put bait in there to attract the beetles in there i haven't really found that's necessary i find tons of dead beetles in these things and I don't put any bait whatsoever inside them. But you can bait them if you want to. I just, if I don't have to do something, I, I don't. Okay, so it's a week later and I checked on my oil pan. I checked on my brawny Dynamax towel. I checked on the beetle blaster. And I had about 50 or so beetles in my oil pan. I had 97 small hive beetles caught in my brawny Dynamax towel and about 10 in the beetle blaster. The beetle blaster is kind of hard to count how many beetles are in there because you can't open them up. So I was just trying to count through the little plastic piece. But I have read that the small hive beetles tend to move up in the hive. So upper traps will probably catch more beetles than the traps that are on the bottom of the hive, like the oil pan. However, I find the oil pan the easiest because it works with every hive. Sometimes these brawny Dynamax towels and the Swiffer sheets, the bees will propolize and it doesn't work on the hive. And then also there's a few days that you have to wait till the bees chew this up before it gets all fuzzy and beetles can get stuck in it. Now the beetle barns is another option and uh, I use these at a bee farm that I worked for. Actually, a couple of bee firms I worked for use them and they work pretty well. The thing is, is that you use a poison as a trap inside. So I'm not a huge fan of buying poison and working with poison, having to put the gloves on and suit up and not touch the poison and inhale it, especially as a new mom who was pregnant and nursing. I don't like to expose myself to that stuff. But um, what I found actually at the one apiary was that if you put too much of that poison in, you kind of mix it in with this like pollen stuff and, and with honey so that it attracts the beetles. But when it was really hot out, if you put too much poison in, the poison would actually ooze out of the beetle barn and the bees would eat it because it was pollen and honey and poison and so then there were lots of poisoned dead bees outside the beehive which we poisoned and that was awful as well okay so some other ways that you can manage your small hive beetle population especially in the summer to to keep the levels low before they get too high is to keep your beehives in direct sunlight the small hive beetle larvae pupate in the ground and they pupate more they do a better job of pupating when it is moist moist soil so you won't be small hive beetle free if your hives are in the sun but it does help keep the population low other thing is that pollen traps if you have them on your hive you want to empty them out often because that can be a place for small hive beetle larvae to hang out and to feed off of 
You want to keep your hives healthy and with very low mite levels so that the bees do a great job of protecting their hive because they're strong. So if you have frames of honey that you just extracted or comb that you pulled out of the hive, don't leave it sitting around. Don't put it in a trash bag and leave it out. I've, I've done that and I've come back a few days later and not only are there small hive beetle, tons of small hive beetle larvae inside, but they actually like true through the trash bag and get out and are in the ground. So you're just um, breeding small hive beetle in your area. Adding to the concept that small hive beetle larvae needs a nice moist ground to pupate in, it can be helpful to put your hives on hard soil, clay, rock, or um, concrete instead of a nice grassy spot. However, we had them uh, on a lava field, like 30 acres of lava field, and they still pupated there and we put them on a roof of a barn that was metal and they still pupated there so these things help to lower the level of small hive beetles but none of them will prevent it um, here in Hawaii the small hive beetle came not long after the varroa mite about 15 years ago and since the bees were already weak with the mite they really just got wiped out because of the small hive beetle. We, I was at a farm with 4,000 hives and they were down to only 800. And so while we in Hawaii were waiting for the USDA to pass laws to allow m mite treatments to be able to brought to Hawaii so that we could treat for mites, the small hive beetle was taking advantage of weak beehives and taking over. And it was very sad to see. And now we have finally bounced back we are able to deal with the mites and that farm that I worked for with the 4,000 hives, uh, the owner has said it many times and I have found it to be true as well is strong hives with low mite levels pretty much keep the small hive beetle population in check if you live in a warm climate which is where the small hive beetle population is going to be the worst. For you guys in the cooler climates, you don't have as much to worry about because you, your frost will kill off a lot of the small hive beetle population. However, the downside to your situation is that when the beetle level starts to get high in that late summer, early fall, that's when you can't like just take the honey out because you need to leave it for the bees for the winter and the population's getting low and that is that weak time when it's not cold enough out that the beetles are going to die but it's not warm enough out that the bees are gathering lots of honey and their population is high and so that is that tricky small little window when you want to make sure your mite levels are low and just have some kind of traps on there to uh, help the bees out and to keep your small hive beetle population down. And don't worry if when you open the lid you see some scurrying around. What you want to worry about is when you start to see them walking around the comb. I found that sometimes the first or the last frame in the box will be where bees start to congregate the beetles. But other than that, if you start to see if you start to see it on a frame of brood, if you start to see them in the middle of a honey super just roaming around, and especially if you start to see little worms, little larvae that look like this, or if you start to see slimy spots. Now what to do if you have an infestation and you start to see these worms or you start to see the slime? Remove all of the slime immediately. I don't care if the frame has brood on it. Take it out, freeze it, and dispose of it. The honey is no good if it has slime on it and adding honey that has small hive beetle slime to your honey harvest will cause it all to ferment. And if you're not sure, it looks a little, little wet, but you're not sure if it's slimy, sometimes bee bread can look a little shiny because it's honey mixed with the pollen. Take your hive tool and poke holes into the cells and look to see what what's inside there. Usually after a few cells of uh, poking holes into a few cells of honey or brew, you'll, you'll see some worms popping out and you'll see some hiding. And then that means take that frame out. You want to push all of the brood together. You do not want to have empty frames of drawn out comb in your hive at this point, especially if there's a lot of beetles uh, or if you see any kind of beetle larva. You want to really consolidate and take out the stuff that isn't food for winter or has brood on it. 
So if you're like me and you like to geek out on why things do what they do and how things work, here's a little bit of information about the small hive beetle. Small hive beetle egg hatches in two to four days. Once that egg hatches, it immediately looks for food. Its food can be honey, pollen, or the brood in eggs. So this is why you really want to keep tabs on your small hive beetle population and infestation can happen very fast. Because what's going to cause that beetle slime is the small hive beetle larva. And those larva can hatch in two to four days. After usually about seven to 10 days, that's when the larva will leave the beehive and pupate in the ground. They're in the ground for usually about three to six weeks before they hatch as a fully grown adult small hive beetle looking for a new beehive to go into. However, small hive beetle larva can live in the beehive for longer than seven to 10 days. They can live about six months as a fully grown adult and they tend to avoid the sunlight, which is another good reason to have your beehives out in the sun. They are really great flyers and a female small hive beetle can lay over 1,000 eggs in her adult life which isn't really that much in comparison to the queen bee who's laying like that much or more a day but you know small hive beetles aren't as busy as the honeybee obviously they're kind of more like free lizards well i hope that helps you with your small hive beetles of course as always being proactive and keeping levels low before you have a problem is always the best way to go. If there are other beetle traps or ways that you deal with the beetle that I have not mentioned, please let, leave them in the comments so that other people see it and can learn from it. And let me know where you live and what your small high beetle population is. Here in Hawaii, it is obscene and incredibly high. However, when I kept bees in Pennsylvania, you hardly ever saw them. Uh, it was a, a little bit colder and, well, a lot colder. It, we didn't have crazy awful winters, but cold enough that they really didn't do so well up there. And if you're thinking about getting started keeping bees, but haven't yet, check out our free getting started guide. It's right at beekeepingmadesimple.com. You can find a link right down there in the description. And it's a short guide, but all the steps really, I wish, um, I knew that I should take before I got started keeping bees. There's also an identification guide, so you're, if you're having trouble identifying the difference between the queen worker drone, eggs, larva, kept brood, kept honey, nectar, honey, pollen, that guide is also included. Thanks for watching. Aloha.